LTC programming is supported by McFadden, President of the Greater Lowell Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to Chamber Chat TV this month. So happy to have you. So excited for our first guests. We have Aaron McCosey and Melissa Glennie from Franklin Professional Associates. How are you both doing? Doing good. good. How are you doing? Great. Great to have you on. Thank you. Very exciting. So for the viewers who don't know what Franklin Professional Associates does, can you kind of give them a quick overview of that? You want to take that one? Go for it. <laughs> On you. So we're a, a staffing and recruiting company. We've been in business for eight years now. Amazing. And uh, last year launched our um, uh, training programs and onboarding support. So we're helping companies to find great people and keep them. <laughs> that is such a big thing these days, too, with the economy being so good. Retention is all you hear. Retention, retention, and then hiring as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So we're lucky to have you. Yeah, we're lucky to have them too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> needed totally. service for sure. Yeah. yeah. What is the biggest obstacle facing companies you work with when it comes to engaging their employees? Oh, that's such a good question. Mm. I, I think that it really starts at the top. So when you consider, you know, when employee engagement starts to break down, it's um, it's usually because the leadership just doesn't understand or appreciate the importance of prioritizing it. So um, I think, it, like everything, every it all starts at the top. So true. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely when employees start to lose faith and trust in the leadership that that value alignment starts to break down. And you start to lose people, and that's something that's hard to recover from. Yeah, and as we talked about the economy, I mean, it, people can find other jobs, so it's really important if you have a good employee to keep them happy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I'm on the Greater Lowell, uh, the Mass Hire, because they just rebranded, but the oh. Mass Hire Greater Lowell Workforce Board. So we hear a lot about kind of hiring and training. Oh, I bet. Yeah, absolutely. What strategies do you use in the interview process to hire the right employee? So not just an employee, but the right employee. Mm -hmm. And it goes both ways for both the employee and the employer. It has to be a, a good match for both. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And, you know, I always say that. 80% of your success in the recruitment process or the, the interview process is really mm -hmm. determined by the first 20%. So when we're working with our customers, we really emphasize the importance of clearly defining the requirements and then also prioritizing them. So for example, um, usually when we start working with a customer, they give us a laund essentially a laundry list of mm -hmm. the things that they would like. <laughs> and then you know it's our job to kind of flush through the level of importance. And then also we ask the questions about how frequently there's certain skill sets that are going to come into play. Because something may seem really important, but if it's only coming into play 5% of the time maybe, or 10%, um, it helps us to, to put it all into perspective and so that we can weigh those requirements. And then we actually create a matrix for our customers so that we can um, basically qualify and quantify the skill sets, the past demonstrated experience doing particular things, getting certain results, mm -hmm. the core values and the personality attributes um, so that we can get a 360 degree view of how the person aligns with the company and with the position itself. Right. I mean, another so. benefit of going with you is, like you said, you kind of flush out those things. You know, it's like when you go looking for a house and you're like, I need all these things. And then once you start looking, you're like, well, maybe the garage isn't as important as the second bathroom. Or, right. you know, you, you kind of help them <laughs> decide what things are really 
the most important things. Yeah, and I mean, that's the first part. And then we actually have created an assessment process where that we use in the interview process right. rather than being off the shelf, yeah. where the off the shelf ones can tend to take some of that human element out mm -hmm. of it. So we can assess specifically uh, based on a, like a customized yeah. approach to it. So um, the other thing I would, the other point I would make lastly is just that having all of the stakeholders on the same page, that's the, the, the real value of having everything clearly defined up front so that you're not using the interview process to figure out what you're looking for because that just takes that's a, a lot longer yeah. <laughs> and it's costly. And I'm sure a lot of people do it that way. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, they do. Great point. How do you set and communicate your organization's core values? Mm. Yeah, I mean, uh, core values are so important. And a lot of our clients that we work with, we always try to, you know, kind of hammer that home and let mm -hmm. them know how important it is. It's, you know, that's that's the fabric of their company. And it really helps uh, set and, and, and kind of set the... Um, the company culture, really, at the end of the day. So if a leadership team isn't living and breathing by their core values every single day, then they're living and breathing by another set of core values. And I think mm -hmm. the employees really feel that, and that's that dissonance that uh, makes it hard for them to buy into the concept. Yeah, I agree. I think that, you know, um, there's still a lot of employees, a lot of companies where people generally see core values as fluff. Mm -hmm. And even executive teams tend to sometimes look at it like it's a box that they need to check. So they go away, you know, three-day retreat or whatnot. They figure out the core values and disseminate them. And then, you know, it just sort of gets attention for a while and yeah. fizzles out. So that's why I think there is that perception for a lot of people that it's not something that the company's um, employees take seriously. But I have found, you know, working for years now with hundreds of companies that the ones who really... Um, have a grasp and where people embody the core values, those are the ones that are getting consistent results and then they're getting that sustainable growth. So it's they really are critical. I mean, you hear about some of the biggest companies in the world and that how their employees kind of live and breathe their core values. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. What are your thoughts as to why potential employees ghost? <laughs> I love this. And do you have any advice? I don't love that they ghost, but I just yeah. like question. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any advice on how to overcome ghosting? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's such a sad reality <laughs> that we're dealing with. Yeah. And it's sometimes just baffling. But, you know, when, it really, when we really get honest with ourselves as hiring authorities and recruiters, you know, I can look back two decades now doing this. And, you know, I have to admit that I think we, by and large, have been doing that to job seekers for two decades. You know, how many times have you heard somebody say, I applied for this job or I've applied for all these jobs and I'm not hearing anything back. Mm -hmm. So um, so here we are, it's come full circle. Yeah. <laughs> and the market has flipped and now we're on the receiving end of it. Um, so it doesn't feel good. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my advice is, all, is just to not take it personally and not to judge too terribly on when it happens. Mm -hmm. um, just just kind of hang in there um, and you know keep trying, not to the extent of being you know stalking people, right. <laughs> but just um, you know kind of understanding that this is kind of the expectation that we're dealing with today and working with it as best as you can. Great. Yeah. Agreed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a tough reality. <laughs> we're yeah. all navigating it in some way, shape, or form. Yes. <laughs> We hear a lot about the trophy generation. Mm. How are employers using the most effective ways of recruiting to manage this group of professionals, mm -hmm. aka millennials? Yes. Yeah, so every generation does seek a trophy in some way, shape, or form. Just so happens this particular generation, it is a literal trophy. <laughs> so, yeah. Give them a trophy. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> it's very simple, right? Yeah. Showed up today. Here's a trophy. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, in our experience, um, working with all different generations, it, it's everyone just wants to feel, you know, valued mm -hmm. and recognized. Um, and appreciated and you know that's really what it's about it's quite simple in the end mm -hmm. I think you hit the nail on the head with that I, I think that you know the trophy generation is really ushering in this cultural shift where people appreciate having um, milestones like professional milestones mm -hmm. that they can achieve um, so you know I, in, in that sense they've you know done us I, I think a service um, in terms of 
specifically in the recruitment process and how do you attract this particular generation, mm -hmm. I think that we need to be mindful of that in the um, application process, the interview process. Um, one example that I can give is the gamification of application processes now. PwC did something really cool with a game called, um, I think it's called Multiploy. It's a play on um, Monopoly. Yeah. So when applicants go to their website to apply, they're actually playing a game. Mm. And um, the game is set up so that they're simulating the interview process, they're simulating different roles in the company, answering questions, and getting the chance to kind of keep going to the next level, next level. And um, so PwC saw, I think, 190% a greater oh applicant pool after they started this, deployed this game. Um, and then the, you know, the, um, uh, I guess, added benefit was that once people did start working there, they acclimated more easily and more quickly because the, the process, they'd already been exposed to all of this stuff about the company. So it, it, you know, this disruptive innovation, it does definitely have its silver lining yeah. if you're looking for it. It's so funny, I'm picturing somebody like playing the game at work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're actually applying for another job. <laughs> and they found that some people were spending up to 90 minutes playing the game. So, oh you know, my gosh. Yeah. This has been a really good game. Yeah. I, I haven't tried it, but you know, it might be something to check out. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be on there for two hours. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> what differentiates your company from others in the field? Hmm. Yeah, this is a good one. Um, I think so. I think the biggest thing that I've noticed with Melissa and the way you've kind of set the core values within Franklin Professionals is um, really putting people first. Mm -hmm. I think that is um, something you don't see often um, these days. I think a lot of people are focused on the on the bottom line and the numbers. Um, and you know, Melissa really has created that shift with the team, and I think everyone's sort of on board there, and um, kind of operates a little differently. And one example that I can give in the past, we, we go to a lot of networking events and you know it's not uncommon for Melissa to find uh, meet a new person at a networking event that maybe is looking for something down the road, you know, a new opportunity. And if it's something we don't currently have at that time, I see Melissa go above and beyond and make calls to her network and you know, ask them to ask friends to find an opportunity for a certain individual. Mm -hmm. So she sort of reverse engineers the process. And I think um, that's not something a lot of people mm. will do. They're very focused on their client list and fulfilling that mm. list. And Melissa's good at kind of looking at the big picture and bringing it back to the people. Mm. Well, I, I appreciate hearing that because when I started the business, I, um, I there were two things I, I think that really were um, key for me. I, I wanted one to be able to really customize the, the way that we do things uh, for both our clients and candidates alike. I don't know if you've ever had the experience as a customer of asking for something and just getting that kind of a flat out, oh, we don't do that or we don't do it that way. Yeah, I don't understand that. And it just really yes. is. Yeah, you're like, what mind. do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and the other thing is I, I felt like sometimes, every you know, we have to meet numbers. Like, that's mm -hmm. just the way that it goes. But sometimes it felt like there was so much emphasis on numbers that people kind of got lost in the shuffle and just left behind. So I wanted to keep that human element up there uh, front and center. Um, but when it comes to differentiators, I you know, I think that it's really easy for us to look at what we think is special about us and what differentiates us, but I like to take it back and just get the answers from our customers. And you know, some will find the fact that we're a certified women-owned business is mm -hmm. you know, clear-cut advantage there. Um, with 45 or so years of um, combined recruiting experience in Central Mass. Wow, impressive. Um, yeah, we've got some good, good experience doing this. And everybody on the team has personal industry experience within the industry or job category. So sales and marketing, manufacturing, accounting, law. So it, we're not just taking orders from customers, but we can have that consultative conversation and then do the heavy lifting to assess candidates' qualifications because we know. we've on that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then, you know, last but not least, I would say that the training and onboarding support that we launched last year, we've gotten really good feedback from our customers, and I think that they just appreciate knowing that we are genuinely interested in not only helping them find great people, but also helping them to retain and develop them.
Yeah, that's huge. Mm. That really sets you apart for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So job well done it kind of works us out of the job, but <laughs> that, that would be a good goal. <laughs> yeah. I know, and I love the point that you said at networking events, it's not only you're meeting clients, but you're meeting potential people that you're trying to place them in jobs too. So you kind of, it's twofold yeah. for you. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. refreshing. to facilitate just a great yeah. match in yeah. whatever way we can. Yeah, that's great. If folks want to get in touch with you, how would they do so? Well, you can find us on our website, franklinprofessionalassociates.com. We're on social media as well, same, Franklin Professional Associates on Instagram, Facebook, um, and of course, email works as well. Mm -hmm. um, Melissa Glennie, Erin McCosey, um, and we have a, a couple of other people you can find online on social media, so please don't hesitate to reach out. Excellent. You can always contact the Chamber as well, and we can point you in that direction. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you for tuning in. We're going to be back after this short break. LTC is Lowell's community media and education center. We have the tools to help you express yourself and change the world. You have the stories that need to be told about people and organizations having a positive impact, human needs, and human rights. You are the person to tell that story on TV, and we can help. LTC offers video production classes and all the equipment you need to get your message out. Do it yourself or use our professionals to help make it happen. Your story might be a half hour talk show, event coverage, an original drama, documentary, or a social media post. We make it easy for you to express yourself and make a difference. Contact LTC to schedule an appointment to plan how to get your message out to the world. LTC programming is supported by technology, the creativity. Hi, and welcome back to this segment of Chamber Chat TV with the Greater Lowell Chamber of Commerce. I'm Danielle McFadden, President of the Chamber. I'm so excited for this segment. We have Shannon Anderson on. She is the broker and owner of Your Way Real Estate, located in Chelmsford. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, excited to have you on today. I'm very excited to be here. There's always great things to talk about when it comes to real estate. I know. Everyone wants to know more and more and more. Exactly. I know. I don't think there's anybody that doesn't have an interest in it exactly. to some level. Yeah. So let's talk about, obviously, your interest in it. What got you involved in real estate? Um, I have been licensed since 2001. And at that time, my daughter was four. And I was just trying to find something that would work around her schedule mm -hmm. so I can, you know, build a career, yeah. but also be the best mom possible. And real estate fit into you know all of that that's and great yeah so is she like a little real estate agent in training <laughs> no she's now she's now 23 <laughs> oh um, my gosh yeah I guess if yeah, you go back that so far. I'm <laughs> hoping she gets her license however um, she just graduated from University of Vermont so. excellent <laughs> However she wants to do her life is up to her as long as she's happy. It's so funny. My friend sent this link and it was like, you know you're in your, you know you're 35, I'm 36, so it was, you know you're 35 one and it said, two, you think 2001 was 10 years ago? And oh, yeah. I just did, literally did that. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's insane. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So let's talk about Your Way Real Estate, a little bit about the history of it and then what sets you apart from other so, firms. I have been licensed forever. I've had my broker's license in Massachusetts since 2004. So I've had the ability to open up my own brokerage mm -hmm. since back then. 
Um, I'm now licensed with my broker's license in New Hampshire, so we Great. cover both states. However, I was going from one company to the next, you know, every four, five, six years, and loving that experience, but always wanting a little bit more or a little bit different. And some circumstances changed this summer where I realized, hey, you know what, you have no other option. You're not going to find what you need and what yep. you want, and you're not going to build the legacy for your family that you really want until you do it on your own. And so Your Way Real Estate was born. Congratulations. Thank you. And you get, kind of get to take the best parts of everywhere that you've been and create a and company. And not bring the worst parts. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and I hope that I'm able to give everyone the best parts, um, but I'm realistic enough to know that it, I constantly need feedback so that yeah. I can grow and the company can grow to the best of its ability. So what sets you apart? Um, I think my caring. I, you know, obviously real estate has afforded me and my family a really good life mm -hmm. um, through a lot of hard work. However, nothing brings me more satisfaction than helping my buyers and sellers build wealth while finding their home um, and just helping people. Even when I don't get a sale or a check, having somebody come to my office and sit down with me and ask questions so that their life can be better or so that they can have a little less worry or so that they can put a plan into place to do the best for themselves and their family. I love that. I absolutely love You can tell just by that. talking, yes. your face is lighting up. <laughs> it's true. It's true. And now I'm excited because I not only have the ability to help buyers and sellers and landlords and tenants, but I have the ability to help other agents too and to make their lives stronger and better because of what I can do for them. So if there's somebody who's an agent or looking to get into the business, are you looking to grow your team? Um, I'm looking for agents. We have one now. We have another one coming on this week and then another one coming on in December. Oh, wow. Yes. So, so you're going fast. Uh, pretty fast. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit scary, but I'm excited about it. However, my goal right now is to make sure that I put the appropriate layers in place mm -hmm. so that I have the strongest foundation possible for the company. Smart. Um, yeah, exactly. And I need that. And I think anyone that wants to come on needs that as well. So when people think about real estate, I think a lot of times they think about spring and summer and frolicking up the steps to their new home, but it's still the market's still hot in the winter months. The market is still hot in the winter months. So do you have advice for somebody looking to either buy or sell or both during kind of the cold, snowy months of New England? So I have a ton of buyers right now. I have some listings as well. However, I feel that there is no wrong time to buy or sell real estate, especially in this world of instant gratification mm -hmm. that we have, where people are on the computer on Christmas Eve and are like, hey, I think I want to buy a house, and they're reaching out to somebody, and it truly happens. <laughs> I believe it. Um, I mean, I've sold houses on <laughs> Easter, like which is crazy when you think about it. However, our society wants things when they yeah. want them. Um, as far as selling this time of year, everyone's house looks good. You know, when you think about it, like my house personally is yeah. cleaner, it smells better, yep. it's decorated way I know, better. and that's like, there's nothing like feeling like festive and uh, you walk into a house. Exactly, and, yeah. and it feels even more like home because yep. of all those traditional memories that we've had over yep. the years with our own families. Um, so I think it's a great time to buy or sell, and I think that from a seller's perspective, you can block out times where they're not going to have people coming through their house. So, mm -hmm. you know, that fear of having people come through on Christmas Eve, yep. you know, we can just block those times for them. Um, and buyers are serious that are out there looking right now. You know, buyers want to buy. And yep. sellers, honestly, there's not enough listings. I'd yeah. love for them to give me a call and get their house on the market now or even after the first of the year. What's the process like if somebody's on the fence or they're thinking about selling, they contact you, and then what happens after that? Um, I usually like to meet with people face to face mm -hmm. um, and just sit down and listen to where they're coming from. What are their concerns? What are their questions? What do they need so that they can make the best decision possible? Mm -hmm. So, um, and at that time, answer all of their questions so that they can do just that. That's great. So for somebody that's not quite ready to put their house on the market in the winter, but their, their New Year's resolution is, I'm getting my house ready for the spring. Oh. What advice can you offer? What are some things that they can do during the winter to get their house ready? Oh, start cleaning out your closets. If you haven't used it in six months, um, get rid of yes. it. Uh, Re-gift it. You know, if it's yep. still in the box, give it to somebody else. Yep. Um, <clears throat> donate it, whatever. But start clearing out the clutter. It's a perfect opportunity mm -hmm. to streamline your life and the things that you just hold on to and accumulate over the years. 
outside of that, call a real estate agent, call me, call somebody else, and at least find out what our recommendations are f to make the most out of your property so that you're not wasting time, energy, and money doing things that you think should be done when in actuality there are other things that should be done and should be focused upon. That's a great point. And also to have somebody come in that, well, first of all, as a professional, so you have an eye for it, but also you're not as connected to the home, so you can say, no, actually, I know you've hated that tile since you've been here, but that's not what's going to sell your house. Exactly. And one of the other things that Your Way Real Estate offers is that we actually have a property management division. So if people have a honey-do list with painting or oh, work great. that needs to be done, we have somebody that comes in who's licensed and insured, uh, insured, and for an hourly rate will take care of those items for you. So you can still use whomever you want to use. However, this just streamlines the process so you know that you're getting the best of the best mm -hmm. for not a lot of money, um, and you don't have to chase somebody constantly yeah. to get the work done. And That's to worth it just to not have to ch <laughs> chase right? somebody. Or somebody, oh, I can do it, but it's not going to be for yeah. two months, and you're like, well, I need it now. Right. So, and so if you start planning in December or January, then you might not need it like right away, too. So exactly. you have a few months to get your house in order, which exactly. is... Exactly. Yeah. And you're from the area. I'm from Chelmsford originally, so born and raised in Chelmsford, uh, alumni of Chelmsford High School. My daughter went through the Chelmsford school system, so I know a ton about not just Chelmsford, but the area. Um, and New Hampshire as well being you know right under the border there. And that makes a big difference if someone's looking to know kind of what the right neighborhoods are for your specific needs for your family or the school system. Exactly and someone that's actively sold f over a long period of time in uh, the communities around here mm -hmm. it, it, it's just a wealth of knowledge and information to help alleviate some of your concerns or um, help point you in the right direction so that you can make a good choice. I have a really random question. Have you yeah. ever sold the same coast twice? Oh yeah, many Yeah, times. really? Oh yeah. That must be so weird. Oh, oh yeah. like kind of cool to oh, walk in and like, see. Oh, worked as a buyer's yep. agent and then sold it as a listing yeah, agent yeah, that's and then true. sold it again. Like there are some houses that I feel like are just on a constant oh, repeat gosh. in my world. And families too. There's nothing more exciting than working with a child of a past client. Like it kind of oh, blows yeah. my mind a little bit. Like wow, I've been doing this so long. I'm now helping second generations, and hopefully third and fourth. And yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I love exciting. that. Yeah, and it must be fun to see kind of what people have done with the different houses. Oh, and, and see how people's lives have grown in yeah. those houses. It's it's so neat. So rewarding. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Um. So you have a ribbon cutting coming up. I do. Let's talk about that. Yes. So excited. Um, so that's December 12th at 2 p.m. Um, I'm doing a little bit of a grand opening at that time. Mm -hmm. So the ribbon com uh, cutting is formally at 2, but then I'll just have a grand open house um, until 5 o'clock. So we'll do some hors d'oeuvres, a little bit of champagne, um, some non-alcoholic champagne too for people that are too young or you know not wanting to drink in the afternoon. Um, what? But, <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> Come on, all you real estate what? agents. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Um, but yes, so we're going to have a nice event there, and I'm super excited and cannot wait for it to happen. I know, and where are you located? We are located right at 6 Boston Road, Unit 101 in Chumsford, um, the center of Chumsford, right next to Fishbones. So there's a ton of parking behind our building that we right. share with Fishbones. There's additional parking next to the CVS in the town center yep. that you can walk down and come to the building from that way as well. Yeah, there's tons of parking in that area. What an awesome area, too. Are you like at Fishbones? Bones. Like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, they I'll look at me funny lunch. sometimes because I come in so often and they're just like, I'm like, I'm just next door. It's like, I don't, I don't work here. Right, exactly. <laughs> I like the autumn salad and the fried oysters. But, That's yeah. so funny. Yeah, it's pretty fun. So what are some of the design trends you're seeing as lately? As, uh, we're still in the grays, the gray neutrals. Yeah. Um, we're still in granite, stainless steel, um, the glass backsplashes. Um, minimalist, I'm, I'm a big fan of that, not having a lot, so oh. I like to see that yeah. more these days. Yeah, I think. And not that country look that we yeah, had. Yeah, the hens and yeah, cows. Exactly. And Which is super cute. Um, it's just that it's not what the modern bu buyer is exactly looking for. No, and I feel like the younger generations too that are starting to buy don't want clutter and stuff. It like, I hate that. stuff. Right, knickknacks. Like I have my mother's yeah. hummels, and I'll have them forever because she. Yeah, gave, yeah right. sentimental. However, at the end of the day, there's no part of this yeah. woman that wants, you know, knickknacks in her house. I get so rid of. I, I'm always like getting rid of stuff, and so my kids are two, three, and six. That's fun. And they'll when they can't find something, they'll be like, "Mom, do you donate it?" And sometimes I'm like, "Oh, sorry." <laughs> but it's good. I know, but yeah, yeah, yeah you're teaching them to get rid of stuff. But I love exactly. that you said like the number one thing you can do is declutter oh, and declutter. And, January is such an awesome time to do that. It's a perfect time to do that. And it all it I think it actually makes your life lighter mm -hmm. when it, you it, don't have all that it stuff. It does. And you don't miss it. 
No, you don't miss it. Although shoes and clothing, I, I do reserve the right to hang on to as much of that as possible. You so. can make your own rules. Exactly. <laughs> it, we all can. We all can. That's the fun part about being human and an adult. Yes. So. We can make our own choices. Exactly. What about uh, painted cabinets? I feel like I'm seeing a lot of that like in um, kitchens. I love painted cabinets. I just sold a personal property last year and we painted the cabinets. We had oak cabinets that were still in great condition, mm -hmm. but they just needed to be freshened up yep. and made more modern. So hiring somebody that does a really good job. Um, the person who does all of my work at the office mm -hmm. um, with the property management is Forsyth Painting and Carpentry, and he does gorgeous work when it comes it's to cabinet not. painting. So don't paint your own cabinets? No, because you don't. the last it's thing you the want is to paint it and then have it scrape yeah. off, and then you're frustrated. So you want somebody that's going to put the appropriate bonding materials yeah. down to give you a clean, professional finish mm -hmm. at the end of the day. And I'm glad you mentioned granite because we just did our kitchen over not that long ago and put granite and now I feel like I'm seeing quartz everywhere and I'm like, oh, is granite going to become dated like the I second I installed so. it? I think all, all of the solid surface countertops are going to, yeah. you know, as long as they're not these, these wacky colors yeah. or anything, but quartz is gorgeous. Yeah, it's it just a matter really nice. of, you know, how long are you going to stay in your house? Is that investment going to give you a better quality of life yeah. as far as like how you feel about it? And is it going to be a return on your investment at mm -hmm. the end of the day? And part of that return on investment is your quality of life and how much you like it. Yeah. So if you really love quartz and you can't live without it and you think you're going to be there for a long time, yeah. then it's worth every single penny. You're wiping the corners and you're happy every exactly. time you wipe them. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Which you can do. <laughs> I had a pantry closet once that every day I looked at it for like three years because it made me so happy. Oh, I would do that. Yeah. Right? And I'd yeah. also hide in it sometimes like with yeah, exactly. like ice with, cream. And yeah, right? <laughs> Exactly. Where are you, Mama? I don't know. No. <laughs> Clean in the pantry. <laughs> <laughs> if folks want to find out more information, contact you to buy, sell, ask questions, how would they do so? Um, the main office number is 978-710-7490, and that is staffed Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. Oh, great. So, it, Which is awesome. Yeah. So even if you want to stop by the office, 6 Boston Road, Unit 101, Chumpsford, Mass., you can do that um, through those hours as well. Mm -hmm. And if you want to contact me directly, 617-943-2619. And one more time, ribbon cutting. December 12th. <laughs> at 2 p.m. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. This was fun. This was really fun. And if you don't have a pen handy, you can always contact the chamber and we can yeah. point you in that direction. Wonderful. Thank you all for tuning in. Wishing everybody happy holidays. Check out our website at greaterlowellchamber.org. We still have a lot going on. In January, we're going to have even more. Thanks so much. technology, the creativity. Lowell Telecommunications Corporation. LTC is Lowell's Community Media and Education Center. We have the tools to help you express yourself and change the world. You have the stories that need to be told about people and organizations having a positive impact, human needs, and human rights. You are the person to tell that story on TV, and we can help. LTC offers video production classes and all the equipment you need to get your message out. Do it yourself or use our professionals to help make it happen. Your story might be a half hour talk show, event coverage, an original drama, documentary, or a social media post. We make it easy for you to express yourself and make a difference. 
contact LTC to schedule an appointment to plan how to get your message out to the world.